But we're going to be blessed tonight. We're going to have church. Y'all ready to have church? Ooh, I'm looking forward to this. We're going to have a good time tonight because Brother Jared Cannon is going to come and preach. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. See, brother, how excited they are? Come on up here, brother. God, brother, bless Brother Jared. He did such an awesome job. And so he's going to preach, I believe, the message is called Uncomfortable Faith, right? Everybody say, God bless Brother Jared tonight. I appreciate him. He's got, you know, he does youth ministry, and he's felt called into the ministry, he and Sister Jasmine. And so he's in the process of reading all of the, the materials that he needs to read to prepare for ministry. And so this is the first time that he's going to preach to the church, I believe, right? And so we're looking forward to that. Everybody say, God bless Brother Jared. We love you, brother. Praise the Lord. Amen. How y'all feeling today? I always tell my uh, the, the the youth class. I always tell them. I said, every time I ask you how you're doing today, we're gonna we're gonna say blessed because every every day every day that we get to wake up, every day we get breath in our, in our lungs, that we're we're blessed, right? We're above the dirt. We ain't got nothing to complain about. You know what I'm saying? We're here. You know what I'm saying? So tonight we're gonna I'm, I'm gonna preach to you about faith. You know what I'm saying? And I think in this time it's very important. You know, very, very important. So we're gonna, so we're gonna open up our Bibles in nineteen, uh, Luke nineteen one. Yes, sir. Luke nineteen one. Everybody there? And it says Jesus entered and uh, and uh, passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And I'm going to read that again. It says, and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for letting us be here tonight, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, that we're blessed with your word, Lord Jesus, not just to hear your word, Lord Jesus, but to apply it in our lives, Lord God, to make a movement in this house, Lord God. I pray, Lord Jesus, in this moment, Lord Jesus, that we have encouragement, Lord Jesus. Let all fear, let all doubt, let all unbelief leave this house tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. Now, 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 from the get go, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. Um, when I preach the word of God, it's not for me. You know what I'm saying? What, the, the word is for me. What I'm saying is, I don't do it to boat to, to put myself up. I don't do it out of pride. I do it because it's the will of God, and I, and I do it for God. You know. Yeah. So everything I tell you tonight, I pray, I pray that, that if, if it's anything outside of the word of God, please don't listen. But if it is, if it's inside of the word of God, please open your ears tonight and hear the word of God. So when, when I, I'll tell you a little bit uh, about myself. Uh, uh, the youth will, will tell you everything. The, the main thing that I focus on in the youth class is outreach. Huge, huge on, 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 on witnessing the people and spreading the word of God. Because the thing is, if somebody wouldn't have spread the word of God to me, I wouldn't be here today. You know what I'm saying? I'm so big on that. I'm so huge on that because the, the, the thing is, it's so important. We can't come to church all the time, sit in the pew. You know what I'm saying? We got the praise down, the worship down, the whole thing down. We can pray to God all day. But the thing is, we ain't spreading the word of God. We're sitting over here. You know what that's called? It's called being greedy. It's called being greedy. I got what I need. You get your own. I got what I need. You get your own. No, 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 no. He said we're supposed to be like Christ. And we supposed to be Christ-like. Did he walk around just sitting there talking about, no, this healing's for me. No, 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 no. This faith is for me. None of you. No, Jesus wasn't like that. He kicked it with everybody. You get what I'm saying? He kicked it with everybody. He didn't have eyes. You can see. You get what I'm saying? Sitting there, you know, who was it? Wasn't it Peter the guy's ear chopped off? I oh, no, no, he chopped off the other guy's ear. I apologize. He chopped off the other guy's ear, and what did Jesus do? It wasn't magic. It wasn't magic, I'll tell you that. We don't believe in that. But what I'm telling you is when I first got into church, you know, um, I, I was so hungry for the word of God, 
I didn't care how I came into the church. I came in nappy. I came in ashy. I came in wrinkled. I'm telling you, my, my, my clothes look horrible. You can put my pants down, they stand up against the wall. It looked horrible. You get what I'm saying? But the thing is, what made me stay is there was, there was a whole bunch of believers that came to me and said, hey, I love you. Jesus loves you. And it wasn't the fake. It wasn't the fake. It was the real. It was the real thing. You get what I'm saying? Because you can have those people. You can have those people that ask you, how are you doing today? And then you begin to tell them and they start walking away. They didn't want to know how you were doing. When you have somebody that has genuine, genuine uh, uh, love, when they have genuine want to know about you, you get what I'm saying? That makes you feel good inside. That makes you feel amazing inside. You get what I'm saying? So when I came to church, I didn't care what time church what, 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 what was beginning. I didn't care what time the service was going to be. I didn't care what time it ended. I remember one time we came to a revival, 1 o'clock at night. I'm sitting there sweating because the air conditioner went off. I'm sitting there sweating, stinking, but guess what? I'm not leaving until I get prayed for. I can sit there all day smelling like rotten eggs all day. I don't care. I'm not leaving until I get prayed for. I'm not leaving until I talk to God for a little bit. You get what I'm saying? If he can get beaten and nailed to a cross for me, you think a little sweat's going to stop? You What's a little sweat going to do? A little bit of time. That's all it takes. A little bit of time. A little bit of patience. A little bit of endurance. He endurance getting beat down. Spat on. Made fun of. Mocked at. Come on now. You act like a few little hours is going to affect us? Oh, 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 we need to listen to Zacchaeus right here. So we're going to go to... We continue. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which, which was the chief among the, uh, the publicans, and he was rich. Right? He was rich. And, and, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and he could not for the press because he was little of stature. You know what I'm saying? So when he says he was rich, when he says he was rich, what does that mean? What does that mean? He was comfortable. Very comfortable. Because trust me, when you're rich, you get the nicest cars. You know what I'm saying? When you drive down the street, get an escalator. It feels like you're going in a bed. Just... It feels amazing. People, you know, get a Tesla. They fall asleep on the way to work. You know what I'm saying? When you got money, you get a little bit of comfort. You get what I'm saying? Maybe you get a little bit too comfortable. Maybe you get a little bit too comfortable. You get what I'm saying? See, Zacchaeus, he wasn't promised that he was going to be even touch God. He wasn't even promised that he was even going to, was even going to see God. Because remember, he was short of stature. He was short of stature. You ever been, you ever felt so small? You ever felt so small that you're sitting there thinking like, why would, why would God want want to do anything with me? Why would God want to do anything with such a small person like me? But he loved you so much that nobody else has your fingerprint. He loves you so much. Not everybody has the same voice recognition. They might sound similar, but it ain't the same. If he spent that much time creating you, you don't think that he can help you through your problems? Come on now. Come on now. The thing is, you got to have faith. And not just regular faith. I'm talking about get about your pew. That kind of faith. You get what I'm saying? If you got to go down the street to the church on the other side of town and it don't look good on that other side of town, there might be gangsters across the street. There might be people across the street that you might be a little bit sketchy about. But guess what? I got a greater purpose. I'm coming to see Jesus. I'm coming to see Jesus. See, that's the problem. People are scared. People are scared. I'm not going to do that because it looks a little bit dangerous and I just don't want to scuff up my boots. It looks a little bit dangerous. They might steal my wallet. They ain't trying to steal your wallet. They want to go back inside and play PlayStation. Come on. You get what I'm saying? These days are crucial. Because like I told the youth, in these days, children are being grown up in a godless house. In a godless house. Like I said, like I, like I told him, I said, if you say Jesus in the household, they think it's their next door neighbor. 
You get what I'm saying? They think it's Jesus. You get what I'm saying? And I'm not doing that to joke. What I'm saying is they don't know who Jesus is. They don't know who Jesus is. Our youth going straight down the drain because they already took it out of the schools. You get what I'm saying? Just because in the back of your dollar bill says, in God we trust, oh, that don't mean nothing. Because I can walk around saying I'm a believer all day. But the good, the, but, 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 but let me tell you is, if you can't see something in my life that, 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 that shows that, let them see you and me. You get what I'm saying? If you can't see something in my life that shows I got faith in God, then what am I? I just walk around and I fit in. I'm not a pilgrim passing through. I'm just some dude just sitting there. You know what I'm saying? Still sitting there in Gomorrah. You get what I'm saying? Still sitting there, sitting there in Simon Gomorrah. My tent ain't changed a bit. You get what I'm saying? Let, 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 let's continue. Four through six. And he ran before and he climbed into a sycamore tree to see him. For he, he, he was to pass that way. Now, the thing is, he climbed into a sycamore tree. Now, now last time I didn't have the measurements, you know what I'm saying? But I looked up with how tall a sycamore tree was. It said between 75 and 100 feet tall. People won't even climb into their truck to come into church. And you telling me this man that was probably about five foot one climbed into a huge tree? Not for a guarantee. You know what I'm saying? Not for a He wasn't guaranteed nothing. He wasn't guaranteed nothing. Let your will be done. He wasn't guaranteed, guaranteed nothing. He tells you in the scripture, he said, you know what I'm saying? Lord willing. Lord willing. You get what I'm saying? I can't say I'm going to do anything tomorrow. Lord willing, I will. Lord willing, I wake up and my car starts. Lord willing, I make it to, to, to church tomorrow. Lord willing, I'm even breathing. You get what I'm saying? But people won't climb into their car and get to church at 9, at 9 o'clock. But Zacchaeus can climb a tree? Come on. I ain't going to lie to you. I wouldn't have made it up halfway. I would have got about three feet and been like, hey, somebody going to have to help me, man. Y'all see my effort. Y'all, Jesus, Jesus, take the wheel. Take the wheel. You know what I need. A Gatorade and an asthma pump. You know what I need. You get what I'm saying? I'm just being honest with you. I shouldn't be up here if I'm going to sit here and just give you lies. Give you nothing but fables. Can I be honest with you for a little bit? You get what I'm saying? I'm not going to lie. I might not have made it up the tree. You know what I'm saying? But I would have tried. I would have tried. I would have tried. And guess what? And guess what? In the street, you'll see people. They'll get into a street fight. You know what I'm saying? Over pride. And if somebody gets knocked down, they better get, be they better get back up. Because guess what? If they don't, that person's going to keep beating them and beating them and beating them and beating them. If you fall down that tree, you get back up. You get back up. And you hope to see God pass through. You hope to see God pass through. Come on now. Continue. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For, for today I must abide in your house. Now, what, what would you do for the opportunity to just, just to see him? Just to see Jesus walk through. What would you, what would, what would you do? Now, you got to understand, this ain't a Klondike bar. Because for a Klondike bar, you might just do it once or twice. Maybe three times if you're hungry. You get what I'm saying? But the thing is, this should be daily. This should be daily. Give him my first fruits. When I wake up in the morning, I want, I want to climb that tree. I want to climb that tree. I might be tired. I might be worn out. I might be stressed. But the enemy ain't going to come in my house and just sit down on my praise. I'm going to connect with Jesus. I'm going to have my time with Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for letting me be here today. I thank you. You get what I'm saying? But the thing is, we can't sit around and walk around with TV face. We can't walk around with, with Fox Network face. You know what I'm saying? That's the kind of faith that they put on TV. You can go to church once, and then after you go to church on Easter, the next week we can go out during the party, and then Sunday we can sit in the church pew, and we can sit there and do little symbols, and we'll be okay. That's it. And we'll be okay. Well, what did I say that in the Bible? 
when did you ever see Paul go clubbing? When you ever see Paul go clubbing and then coming to church Sunday talking about, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. No, 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 no. He got stoned, got back up and was just like, I ain't got time for the club. And if I go into the club, you best believe I'm bringing about some believers. If I'm going into the club, if I'm going to the south side of town, you best believe I'm coming, coming out with a couple of Bible studies. I'm coming about with a couple of appointments. You get what I'm saying? We got to have faith like a mustard seed. Something so small and minute, but it can affect the world. But can affect the world. You're not just a small person. You are important. I forgot. I'm in West Texas. You are impotent. You get what I'm saying? You're very important. You get what I'm saying? You're not just some small person full of of blood and a little bit of bones. You know what I'm saying? You're blood by. You get what I'm saying? Somebody gave their life for you. You get what I'm saying? He gave his life to you. And y'all must have here. And and, and guess what? None of y'all can be swine because swine would have just trampled on the word. You get what I'm saying? You can't be swine. You must be believers because you're sitting in the church tonight. And even if you don't feel God tonight, guess what? You got another chance. You got another chance. Now, 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 now I, like to tell the, I like to tell the youth. I like to tell the youth, hey, hey kids, calm down. The, re- the reason being is because, you know, when we're praising God, it's, it's an opportunity. And not just an opportunity, but a privilege. But a privilege. People over here getting their, 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 their heads chopped off if they're a believer in Jesus Christ. People getting persecuted if they're, if they're a believer in, believer in Jesus Christ. You get what I'm saying? But, 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 but a, little sn- a little little sniffle and a little cough keep us from, from opening up a church? What you talking about? We got 79 cases out of 200,000 people? And you telling me shut down the church? Oh, like, in the words of my, my, my mama, you done lost your everlasting mind. I'm going to show up to church. When I had, I was sitting there, I was sitting there, and I had strep throat and I'm in the house. I got fever and a whole bunch of other stuff I ain't going to go over. You can do, use imagination. I'm sitting there. I got fever. I text pastor. I said, hey, do you want me to uh, sit, sit, uh, uh, sit in, in the congregation and let the youth classes go, go, go to the back? I was going to come to church. I was going to sit in the back pew with my little mask on. You know what I'm saying? With my little, you, 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 know, for, you know, social distancing. You know, I was going to sit there with my mask on. Some little, you know, because my ears weren't feeling that great. I was going to sit there and cough through the whole sermon. You know what I'm saying? Congested. I need Jesus. I need healing. How you going how you gonna kick me out of the place that's gonna fix me? This the only place I feel at home. The only place I feel at home. Brothers and sisters all around me. You get what I'm saying? The presence of the Lord is here. You can feel him in the atmosphere. Come on now. Now, the thing is, Jesus told him to come down for today I must abide in thy house. Guess what? He said today. Today. Not yesterday. Not last week. You don't sit there and make an appointment with Jesus. You don't sit there and make an appointment with God and be like, be like, well, next week ain't good for me. I got to be at work at seven o'clock and then I got to get my nails done. If you're a woman, no paint. You know what I'm saying? Little, 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 you know, you know, you know, a little, little bit of clear, you know what I'm saying, and everything, you know, your nails getting cleaned out, everything like that. You know, I got a dentist appointment. You can't make those kind of, what? Jesus said, today I must abide in your house. Today. Today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. The day after that. My God is a God of today and a day on after. And guess what? There's always going to be, there's going to be a change made inside of you. There's going to be that change made inside of you. All, all, all that procrastination that you used to have is going to disappear. It's going to be, it's going to disappear. You know, back in the day, I could, I could go out and I could, I, I could drink. I can go and, and get, go to a party and get into a fight and everything like that. And the next day I feel all right. I feel Okay. But, but, but I can't do that no more. I can't do that anymore. 
if I think about knocking somebody out, Jesus be like, uh-uh, Jared. Uh-uh. I didn't change you. I didn't change you. You know, you, you know, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 you know what I'm saying? See, that, that guy that you're angry with, that guy that you're angry with, guess what? I'm not his daddy, but I am yours. I am yours. And you are mine. You represent me. You represent me. And please don't be scared of me when I'm talking about fighting and stuff. You know, that's, that's, that's B.C. before Christ. But B.C. before Christ, I'm really not that type of dangerous guy anymore. Far from it. Because I became a new living creature. It's a, it's a totally new, new, new different person. I remember, or I remember, because I ain't going to give all, all of Mark's uh, information out. But anyway, I remember back in the day, we weren't the best type of people. You get what I'm saying? But all glory to God. All glory to God right here. We weren't the best type of people. You get what I'm saying? That the few things that wasn't necessarily legal. In our book it was, but it but, but, but wasn't necessarily legal. When he called me and he told me, hey, I can't go nowhere Sunday. I got to go to church. I almost dropped the phone. Mike, you going to church? Man, you need to stop playing with God like that. Don't be doing that. It ain't funny. No, man, I'm really going to church. One day I went over to his house and knocked on the door. I looked at him. He didn't look like the same person that used to be. He wasn't the same Mark that used to be. His wife walking around in holiness. With her dedication to God. You know what I'm saying? Out, out front for everybody to see. You get what I'm saying? And that was a change in them. And I was just like, what? What have they been drinking? What's been going on here? What's been going on here? And I start asking questions. And he'd stomp me. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'll be like, well, if Jesus is, if Jesus is God, then he stomped me. And then he pull out scripture because without scripture, you ain't got nothing. So, so what I'm saying is he pull out scripture and answer some questions. And he'd be like, you know what? I might not be able to answer this, but if you come to church, you can ask my pastor. 